sorry <clears throat> about that. My, my kid messaged me and knocked my video off. You know, because this is take two of this. Um, but do I feel that what Jasmine is doing is a mockery of Christianity? No, I do not. And I think that judging her based on the hashtag, which some people are doing, is kind of wrong. Although I know she's not doing it. That's not, I don't, that's not her intention, but, um, but there are some people that are coming across with, with, with that. Um, you do have, um, a lot of people within the pagan community that are coming from a place of religious trauma. Um, and I kind of feel like those people that, that feel that it's a mockery on Christianity, um, and it's, you know, basically, again, giving them a log to put in the fire. I think that maybe they should take a step back and look and watch all the live streams that have been done um, and listen to everyone who's contributed a video or contributed their opinion or made contributions to the um, to the challenge and look at what everybody is doing and look at what everybody has been saying. Because to me, to be perfectly honest, with people that are participating in the hashtag, I've seen nothing but positivity. Um, watch Taya Kennedy's video on Sloth. I highly recommend it. Um, and they're coming from a place of what this means to them or their interpretation. Um, and I see nothing but positivity coming from this. Um, I feel that the Christian community, a lot of people within the Christian community are not coming across as very loving and not practicing what they preach. I feel that, and I know I'm going to be called a Christian hater. I'm not a Christian hater. It is not Jesus that I have a problem with. It is his fan club. But I see too many people within the Christian community coming from a place of hate, coming from a place of bigotry, coming from a place of prejudice. Uh, Greg Locke talking about sex trafficking, but yet he makes a statement in his little rap video about slavery, and he doesn't mean picking cotton, as if women who were slaves were not sex trafficked and sexually abused, and he kind of downplayed that, and that's another, that to me, that's an example, you know, to be ignorant, you can also have a form of racism, um, I really, <laughs> Because this is take two of this video. Um, I I do not see where Christians, a lot of Christians, are coming from a place of love at this point. Especially with the Christian, um, this Christian nationalist movement that is being so prevalent. And a lot of misinformation um, being spread about the pagan community and the witch community. I really have an issue with that, and it's just being loud and proud about your hate, and I, I just, that just bothers me, um, and I have an issue with the fact of, you know, as a kid, I was raised to not question a pastor or not question a church, but I see a lot of indoctrination. You're teaching these kids to hate, you know, as a baby, you're not born a racist, but you're teaching these kids misconceptions, um, about witchcraft or about paganism, um, and to me, that is very problematic. And there, to me, from what I've been seeing with this whole movement now, that uh, there's just, there's a lot of hate being being thrown at the disabled community, against the pagan community, and a lot of serious lack of education. I'm hearing these pastors say um, that they there's no place for the separation of church and state with within the constitution. And, um, I even heard a politician stand in a church and say that there is no, um, separation within church and state within the constitution. I believe that they're trying to eliminate, eliminate that. And, uh, but yet they don't want to look at history and how that has not worked. Separate, no separation of church and state has not worked. And it's not going to, and I feel that that's a lot of reasons why they're trying to take a lot of things concerning, you know, with education um, out, that they operate from a place of indoctrinating children when they're young. 
I feel that the way they bash um, the whole, a lot of them bash with mental health, spreading misconceptions about being mentally ill, and that if you're mentally ill and you're not praying to be delivered from it, that you're you're sitting and just just you're always having your nose in what everybody else is thinking and doing and judging their faith instead of leaving it between the person that you feel is committing a transgression and God, which is what the Bible says. Uh, and I really have just this really big problem with that. And with all of just the negativity that they are spreading, um, because to me, they're, I see a lot of them are losing their grip and to, you know, people are starting to think for themselves, use logic, use common sense. And a lot of people, especially people, there's a lot of people within the pagan community that have left the church. Um, I, when I was in the church, I was with another lady. Um, I'm coming from a background of associate's degree in child development. And this other lady worked heavily with NAMI. And we wanted to do a presentation educating the community on mental disabilities and mental illness. And the church would not support us. And people, it just seems like they try to scare people into uh, not thinking for themselves, not having common sense. Um, and that is very problematic. You, you just, you, there's no room for, to be an individual within Christianity. And again, it's not Jesus I have the problem with. It's his fan club. And I'm going to be called a Christian hater for that. But I'm just trying to educate people on the misconceptions that, that are being spread. And I'm not saying that all Christians do it. But I do feel that if you are Christian and you don't agree with the mess that's going on now and you say nothing and you do nothing, then you're just as problematic as these Christian nationalists that are spewing the mess that they spew. Um and I'm speaking again as someone who, who was in in the church for a period of time. But no, I don't feel that this is a mockery. Um, and I think that it, instead of just saying, I don't like it, it's a mockery, maybe waiting until after um, Lent and watching all the live streams and watching all the contributions that people are making on the on the challenge. Um, just because you hear certain words or certain terms and basically putting your hands and, and I'm seeing some, I'm not saying that Reverend Victoria did this, but you know, other people that have a problem, um, with it, I think, you know, it's, it's kind of unfair to just say, this is my opinion and not listen to what everyone else has to say or what everyone else is contributing to the challenge. Because in a way, this could be a way to have a discussion and for everyone to come together and have common ground. And I feel that that could be a good thing. I feel that this Witches Lent is a good thing um, to do. And I, I am going to participate in the challenge. Um, and I'm working on, on so many things. But it's just that you need to give people a chance you don't get it just give people a chance and listen to what is going on within the challenge um before you say that it's a mockery of christianity although i respect tori for her feelings um you know how how she feels on the matter but um and again you know she she's she's not coming she's coming from a place of love and not a place of hate um and you know just take take a step back and give the um community a chance and it, it doesn't matter what the pagan community does christians are always going to have a problem with it no matter what they do um and we're not going to change their minds we're not you know, it doesn't matter what we say or what we do. We're always going, they're always going to have a problem. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. And, you know, when we jump the gun, we're doing the same thing that they do to us. And 
there needs to be some justice in the situation, especially when during the season of Lent, the uh, Salem witch trials had started and the people that were murdered in the Salem witch trials were in fact practicing Christians. They were not witches. So there again, another misconception. I'm just, I'm really sick and tired of the hate that Christian, these Christians now, a lot of them, are spreading about the pagan community. And yes, it's always been prevalent, but now they feel like they have to be loud and proud with their hate. Loud and proud about their hatred and misconception and lack of education with the, with the pagan community as well as with the LGBTQ community. And I feel that what grown adults do in their own bedroom is their own business. And they're just, they're... They have to be like like up in your face with every concept of your daily life. Um, and it just, it really, really bothers me that, that they preach, a lot of them are preaching so much about how one world order is bad, but yet, you know, you're not allowed to think for yourself. You're not allowed to have an, a, a different opinion. You have to just, this whole thing with this indoctrination, like, this is the fact, and, and in fact, it's not. And I feel like because a lot of people are getting smart with social media and, and an ability to do their own research and think for themselves, and there are a lot of people that are leaving the church. And one other thing that I have an issue with is um, the shaming of people, you know. And to me, even though, yes, there's a lot of people that are suffering from religious trauma, I, I am feeling like they're is a lot of narcissistic abuse within the, um, within this, this new nationalist movement and a lot of support for women being devalued and you, you, this whole thing with, uh, you know, you value life, but yet, you know, an abortion is killing a baby, but yet, you know, what are you doing to these kids for these kids that are in foster care, you know, uh, because I need a baby so I can indoctrinate it. Um, but you know, you have all these, this, this just, you, you, an abortion is murder, but yet look at, we, we having issues with, um, even giving kids formula. Well, then the mother should stay home and breastfeed and not work. Um, I just really have a problem with what these newer Christians are trying, or newer Christians, this Christian nationalist people are trying to do to society. We've come so far. And to just this whole thing with the whole negative aspect of the witch's black lint, it just, it, it really bothers me. Um, you know, it's, it's not giving, not giving people a chance. Um, it's just, oh, my cat. It's just, it's something that just really, I mean, she's coming from a place of love and respect, but, you know, I'm, I'm hearing that some people aren't, and it's just, we're doing what they're doing, and then we have no, you know, when it comes to just this hate and this bigotry and this prejudice, when we do the same thing, we're just as bad as they are, um, and I just, I just really have a problem with, with that and it do it to a degree. Do I feel triggered? Probably. I feel triggered by this, this whole, this whole Christian nationalist and Greg Locke stuff. I really feel triggered by that. And I think that the witch's black lint is a way of pagans kind of working with that. Um, you know, not to make a mockery, but to examine, you know, and maybe this can be a way to have a, a discussion, uh, uh, you know, where you look at it from a different, you know, you look at it from the other person's point of view. And I see some people that aren't doing that. Um, this is my, you know, it's just, you know, you need that. That's the thing. We don't look at it from another person's point of view and you're not willing to compromise and have a discussion and look at it from both sides. And I am looking at it from both the pagan community side as well as, 
as Reverend Victoria sighed, but as uh, Zabora said in her video, um, Conversations About God on YouTube, um, the whole with seven deadly sins and seven heavenly virtues, that does have its roots in paganism. Um, so it's not necessarily a Christian concept. Uh, again, <laughs> um, but I think that with the uh, this Christian nationalist thing, that there are a lot of people that are really getting triggered. There's a lot of prejudice and hate and all of this just coming out of the woodwork, and a lot of people, you know, it's it's, it's very triggering to a lot of people. And even though we keep calling people out on their on their mess, it's not fixing the situation. It has that has to, you know, that has to be done by the Christian community, um, calling these people out and and dealing with it. Because us as pagans saying anything, um, it's not going to happen. But when the community chooses to deal with itself, um, th there's not. It's not going to change anything um, because people are coming from a place of indoctrination and of fear. And, you know, I can have a I can have a conversation with someone who has a different religious belief. Well, there are a lot of uh, when it comes to religion, there's a lot of things within indoctrinations not indoctrinations, um, that's a bad word, with aspects or things within a particular religion um, that I don't agree with. I, I don't agree with some aspects of the Muslim tradition. I don't agree with some aspects of the Jewish tradition. But just because I don't agree with it, I'm not going to knock it. And I see that a lot within... Um, this new Christian community that's just, you know, not necessarily that it's new, but just they feel now that they can be very vocal about it. Just because someone doesn't believe, have the same religious beliefs that I do, I'm not going to gonna say uh, that it's bad or, or spread a bunch of misconception and lies about it that that just seem to be coming from a very, from from a place of hate. I don't uh, judge someone because of their religious beliefs. I don't say that they're disgusting or bad or negative because they believe differently than me. And I've had issues with people, uh, with Christians who've said that about pagans and they don't know I'm pagan. And I just see a lot with Christians coming from a place of negativity and fear. And we're not going to change it. Um, and I think that for people that have suffered abuse, <coughs> religious abuse and religious trauma, this is a very good thing for them. And I also feel like within the Christian community, this Christian nationalist thing, again, you know, there's a lot of people that are suffering from PTSD and narcissistic abuse and and things like that, due to their religious trauma, due to the weapon, Chris, these Christians weaponizing their religion and shaming people, and again, holding people accountable. I can hold someone accountable um, for what they do and not come from a place of hate, because I'm holding someone accountable doesn't make me a hater. So that's kind of my rant and my ramble on the matter, so peace, love, and light, guys. Hi guys, so um, I'm coming on to do a video on my thoughts, um, again concerning the whole controversy with the Witches Black Lent. Um, I watched Reverend Victoria's video, um, and here's what I have to say on the whole thing. Um, I am not going to spread a bunch of misconceptions uh just because i i see where she is coming from um and i'm not gonna say that 
she is not wrong or valid because she doesn't agree. Um, but I am going to say that I kind of, I see where she's coming from, but I don't feel that it is a mockery against Christianity. I do agree with her that respect has to go both ways, but to be perfectly honest, I'm not seeing a lot of respect within um, a lot of people within the Christian community towards pagans. Um, although I kind of can see where she would say that um, basically we're just giving Christians um, another match uh, or another log to throw in the fire on the hatred of the pagan community. Um, I love that Reverend Victoria. I know that Reverend Victoria is not coming from a place of hate or bigotry um, as an interfaith minister. Um, and I'm not going to spread misconceptions about her. Um, I'm going to tell the truth about her. And she is a very strong advocate within the disabled community, within the pagan community. And to be perfectly honest, she can give a kick-ass um, oracle card reading. 